Hello everyone and welcome to Prof Talks. Today we are going to discuss one of the most important guidelines that has been recently updated and released that is EU Annex 1 which is for manufacturing of sterile drug products. This guidance was under revision since the last approximately 5 years and now finally it has been released on 25th of August 2022. The deadline for coming into operation is one year that is 25th of August 2023. So we'll look into detail of this guideline. If we look into the background, the European Commission's Utralex Volume 4 defines the European guideline to good manufacturing practices for medicinal products for human and veterinary use. Annex 1 of Udralex Volume 4 provides the guideline for manufacture of sterile medicinal products. The Annex 1 for sterile medicinal products was made effective last time in the year March 2009. EU Commission revised the Annex 1 to reflect changes in the manufacturing and regulatory environment. The major update, it elaborates the approach for sterile manufacturing. The previous version was of 16 page document and the current published version is a 59 pages document. From this point itself, we can see the elaboration into the process that has been done by EU. Emphasis on the end-to-end -end process contamination control, which is termed as an holistic contamination control strategy, very commonly called as the CCS. The previous version did not have any mention of the specific term called CCS, while the current published guidance has it 51 times. So what is contamination control strategy? Actually, it is a planned set of controls for microorganisms, pyrogens and particulates. It is derived from the current process and product understanding that assures process performance and product quality. The controls can include parameters and attributes related to activity actives, excipients, components, facility and equipment, operating conditions, in-process control, finished product specification, associated frequencies of monitoring and control. Before going to the details, let us just quickly have a look at some of the few major changes. Please note that these are some of the changes and details of all the changes will look into this presentation. So first of all, there has been a change in the non-viable particle monitoring during the clean room classification as well as the routine monitoring. So if we see at these two pictures, it was the to the left is the one that was available in 2009 and the one on the right is in 2022. So for point uh, for 5 micron particle at grade A and B in operation limit has been provided while this limit has not been specified into the current guidance at rest. And also uh, for grade B the limit has been pro grade A the limit has been provided in operation for 5 micron particle which has not been specified in the current guidance. For C and D 5 micron particle limit at rest has been relaxed and this is the detail of this relaxation. Similar is the case with the microbial monitoring limits. So if we see for grade A the limit has been specified in the earlier guidance as less than 1 CFU per meter cube. Now the limit has been specified as no growth. If there is any growth, investigation need to be carried out. Moving to the next point, the grade B governing requirements. So it is being specified that appropriately sterilized, non-powdered rubber or plastic gloves should be worn. There is no requirement for donning a second glove and there is no requirement about garment folding. In the current guidance, appropriately sterilized non-powder rubber or plastic gloves should be worn while donning the sterile garments. Garment sleeves should be tucked into a second pair of sterile gloves worn over the pair while donning the gown. Garments should be packed and folded in a way as to allow operators to don without contacting the outer surface of garments and to prevent the garment from touching the floor. So grade D gowning requirements, there is no requirement for covering the moustache for the grade D gowning requirements which is now that moustache should be covered in the grade D requirements as well. For the differential pressure between the adjacent room, the limit was mentioned as should have a DP of 10 to 15 pascals which the terminology is now changed that DP should be minimum of 10 pascals. 
for the change room there should be a separate change room for man and material is desirable this was mentioned in the earlier guidance separate change room for leaving the area is desirable which has now been changed that separate entry for man and material should be there and if it is not possible time based separation should be available separate change room for entering and leaving grade b if not possible then time based separation should be available and finally the length of tubing of particle counter particle counter with short length of tubing should be used and it is now mentioned that the tube length of particle counter should not be more than 1 meter before moving ahead please ensure that you have subscribed to the channel prof talks and has pressed the bell icon so that you can receive the notification for upcoming presentations if we look into the overall document map it defines 10 basic principles first scope principle pharmaceutical quality system premises equipment utilities personnel production and specific technologies environmental and process monitoring and quality control so let us look one by one into each first the scope of this guidance the scope of the sterile products viz actives sterile excipients primary packing materials and finished products for single use multiple use automated or manual operation biotech products closed systems this uses principles of qrm to ensure microbial particulate and endotoxin pyrogen contamination is prevented in final product some principles like contamination control design of facility clean room classification personal gowning can be used for other products like liquids creams and ointments if principles have been applied for non sterile products it should be documented and compliance to those principles should be demonstrated then we move to the principle part there are seven specific points determined for the principle first that is special requirements to minimize the risk of contamination it states that facility equipment and process should be appropriately designed qualified and validated and subjected to ongoing verification use of technologies like rabs isolators robotics rapid methods and continuous monitoring system should be considered to increase protection of product and rapid detection of contamination personnel should have adequate qualification and experience training and behavior with a specific focus on protection of sterile products during manufacturing packing and distribution processes and monitoring systems should be designed commissioned qualified monitored and regularly reviewed by personnel with appropriate processing engineering and microbial knowledge raw materials and packing materials should be adequately controlled and tested to ensure suitable level of bio burden and endotoxin pyrogen the second principle is related to qrm process equipment facility and activities should be managed as per qrm principles to proactively identify risks to quality if alternative approach is used it should be supported by rational risk assessment and mitigation actions the qrm priorities include appropriate design of the facility equipment process implement well designed sops and a monitoring system to ensure appropriate implementation of the systems monitoring or testing alone does not give assurance to sterility the third principle is the contamination control strategy contamination control strategy to be implemented across facility to define the critical uh, ccps and assess effectiveness of control that is design procedural technical and organizational and monitoring measures to manage contamination risks the ccs strategy should establish robust assurance of contamination prevention ccs should routinely be reviewed updated and should derive continuous improvement effectiveness of ccs should be part of periodic management review it should be noted that from the seven principles point 2.3 to 2.6 all are related to the contamination control strategy thus giving the importance of ccs in this revised guidance the fourth principle again is related to ccs contamination control and steps taken to minimize 
of contamination are series of interrelated events and measures. They are assessed, controlled and monitored individually, but their collective effectiveness should be considered together. The fifth principle is related to the development of a contamination control strategy. It requires detailed technical and process knowledge. Elements to be considered includes plant and process design, premises and equipment, personnel, utilities, raw material control, container and closure, vendor approval, outsource activities, process risk assessment, process validation, validation of sterilization process, preventive maintenance, cleaning and disinfection, monitoring systems, prevention, trending, investigation, root cause analysis, CAPA and continuous improvement. The sixth principle is related to the review of the contamination control strategy. CCS should consider all aspects of contamination control and its life cycle should include ongoing and periodic review resulting in update of quality system. Changes to system in place should be assessed for any impact on the CCS before and after implementation. And finally is the product sterility. Take all steps and precautions to assure sterility. Sole reliance should not be placed on any terminal process or finished product. Moving ahead with the third aspect that is the pharmaceutical quality system. Pharmaceutical quality system should address specific requirements for trial product manufacturing. Ensure activities are controlled to minimize microbial, particulate and endotoxin pyrogen contamination. Manufacturers should ensure an effective QRM integrated in all areas of product life cycle. Sufficient knowledge and expertise for products manufactured and equipment manufacturing methods. Root cause analysis of failures to evaluate product quality risk and implement suitable CAPAs. Risk management is applied in development and maintenance of CCS to manage contamination risks. Should document the decision on acceptance of residual risks. Senior management effectively oversee the state of control throughout the facility and product life cycle. Risk management outcome is reviewed regularly during change control and PQR. Process for finishing and transport should not compromise the product. Consider container integrity storage of product in accordance to registered storage condition. Person responsible for release has access to manufacturing and quality information, has adequate knowledge and experience in sterile manufacturing and their critical attributes. Non-conformities like sterility test failures, EM excursions, deviations should be investigated. Determine the impact on process and product quality including other process and products. Justify and document the reason for including or excluding a product batch from scope of investigation. Moving ahead with the next part that is premises. In the premises, four important aspects are considered. First, the general requirements. Second, the barrier technologies. Third, the clean room and clean air equipment qualification. And fourth is the disinfection. So first we'll look into the general requirements part. Manufacturing should be carried out in appropriate clean rooms. When we say clean rooms, clean rooms are the rooms designed, maintained and controlled to prevent particulate and microbial contamination of the products. It is assigned and reproducibility meet an appropriate air cleanliness level. There are four grades of clean rooms. Grade A clean room is the critical zone for high risk operations or making a septic connection by protection through first air. So if we see a critical zone is a zone in which the product critical surfaces are exposed to the environment. And when we say the first air, it is the filtered air that has not been interrupted by items like operators prior to reaching the critical zone. So it is provided by localized airflow protection like unidirectional airflow stations, RABs, isolators, direct intervention by operator should be minimized. Then there is grade B zone, background for aseptic preparation and filling, if not an isolator. So pressure differential should be continuously monitored. If isolator is used, grade C and D surrounding can be considered. 
The next is grade C and D. It is used for less critical operations or background for isolators. Can be used for preparation, filling for terminally sterilized products. If we look into the general requirements, then there is the clean room design. Facility should be designed to permit observation of production activity from outside the grade A and grade B area. That is the provision of windows or a full view remote camera. The surfaces should be smooth, impervious, unbroken, selected materials to minimize generation of particles, no recess, minimum projection ledges, shelves, cupboards and equipment. The doors should be designed to avoid recess that cannot be clean. Sliding doors may not be desirable. Ceilings should be designed and sealed to prevent contamination from space above them. Sinks and drains are prohibited in grade A and B. In other areas, air black to be placed between machine or sink and drains. Flood drains in lower drain to be fitted with traps to prevent backflow. Material of construction and items used with the room should minimize generation of particles and prevent repeated cleaning and sorry and permit repeated cleaning and disinfection. Continuing with the clean room design, the components and product preparation and filling should be with technical and operational separation to prevent mix up. Wraps and isolators are useful to minimize contamination. Their use should be considered in CCS. Any alternate methodology used should be justified. When we say RABS, RABS are the system which provides enclosed but not sealed environment for aseptic processing grade A. It uses rigid wall enclosure and air overspill. While isolators are the decontaminated units with internal work zones meeting grade A condition providing continuous isolation of the interior from exterior. Moving ahead with the general requirements, we move to the airlocks. So we see the requirements for the airlocks. Entry to the clean rooms should be through change rooms that act as an airlock. If we see an airlock, it is an enclosed space with interlocked doors to maintain air pressure control between adjoining rooms of different grades to avoid ingress from lesser grade to higher. There are two types according to use. One is the personal airlock, as the name suggests, areas of increasing cleanliness for personal entry, grade D to grade C, grade C to grade B. Hand washing facility to be provided only in the first stage and not in change rooms directly assessing grade B. Then there's material airlock, second type, only equipment and materials developed during validation of transfer process is allowed. If separate airlock is not possible for personal and material entry, a time-based separation should be defined in the SOP. Separate change room for entering and leaving in grade B should be available. If this is not possible, time-based separation to be defined in the SOP for entry and exit. If the contamination control strategy suggests high risk of cross-contamination, separate change rooms should be considered. The final state of airlock at rest should be same cleanliness grade for viable and total particles as the clean room to which it leads. Door interlocking. Both doors should not open simultaneously. Interlocking of grade A and grade B airlocks should be there. Visual and audible alarm warning system for grade C and grade D airlocks at a minimum should be present. There should be appropriate zone segregation and if required, time delay between closing and opening of interlocked doors should be established. We are moving ahead with the general requirements of premises. We look now for the airflow and clean air requirements. Clean rooms should be maintained to appropriate cleanliness and supplied with air passed through appropriate filters. Unidirectional airflow for grade A should be demonstrated and qualified. Flushing of airlocks with filtered air should be there to ensure maintenance of clean room grade. Visualization of airflow patterns should be carried out to demonstrate no ingress from the lower grade area, no travel of air from lower grade areas like floor over operators or over equipment that may transfer contaminant. From grade B, when transfer holes are used to transfer filled products to adjacent room of lower grade, 
airflow visualization study should demonstrate a does not ingress in grade b the airflow visualization is done at rest and in operation video recording should be retained outcome used for establishing the environmental monitoring program if a risk is identified corrective actions like design improvement to be considered controls and monitoring should be scientifically justified and capable of evaluating environmental conditions of clean rooms and airlocks moving ahead with the pressure differential requirement positive pressure in the clean room should be maintained and should be supplied with filtered air to maintain a positive pressure as compared to the background can be modified for certain materials like pathogenic radioactive and live viral with positive or negative pressured air lock to prevent contamination of the surrounding area a minimum pressure differential of 10 pascal for the adjacent room of different grades should be maintained this is a revamping of the requirement where 10 pascals have been mentioned earlier it was 15 pascals facility decontamination and treatment of air leaving the area the facility decontamination is needed for some operations when contaminant requires air to flow into critical areas the source should be from area of same grade pressure differential indicators should be fitted between clean rooms set point and its criticality should be documented in the ccs monitoring of differential pressure if identified as a critical during the ccs it should be monitored continuously and recorded for others should be monitored at regular interval there should be a dp warning system to notify any failure procedure should define steps to be taken on receipt of such warning these warnings should not be overridden without assessment when alarm delays are set it should be justified and assessed within the ccs transfer of material and equipment so the transfer of material and equipment should be unidirectional should be assessed and control measures should be in place material pass through hatches should be designed to protect higher grade environment transfer from lower to higher grade should require cleaning and disinfection commensurate with the risk where possible items should be sterilized and passed through double door ended sterilizers sealed in the wall like double door autoclaves or the deep pyrogenation tunnels where sterilization is not possible other equivalent methods like rapid transfer system effective transfer disinfection bacterial retentive filters should be implemented and validated any unapproved item to be transferred should require a pre approval with risk assessment mitigation measures recorded in ccs and approved by qa removal of items from grade a and b should be via separate unidirectional process if not possible time based separation should be considered now we move ahead uh, with the premises part into the barrier technologies where specifically two different terminologies have been explained first is the isolator and second is the wraps so if we look at the isolator the enclosure capable of reproducible interior bio decontamination with internal work zone meeting grade a providing uncompromised continuous isolation of interior from exterior environment so there are two types closed and open isolators and if we look into wraps it provides enclosed but not fully sealed environment for aseptic processing using rigid wall closure and integrated gloves to separate interior from the surrounding doors are rarely opened only under predefined conditions so design of an open isolator ensure grade a condition with first air protection in critical zone with unidirectional air flow that sweeps over and away from exposed products if we look at the closed isolator it ensures grade a condition for exposed product air flow may not be fully unidirectional when processing lines are included in the closed isolator then it should ensure the unidirectional air flow that sweeps over and away from the exposed products and there are negative pressure isolators as well they are used when contaminant is essential for example radio pharmaceuticals specialized risk control steps should be applied if you look into the design of the wraps it ensure grade a condition with first air protection in critical zone with unidirectional air 
positive airflow critical zone to supporting background to be maintained. Moving ahead with more differentiations, if we look at the background for isolator, for open isolator, the background should be minimum grade C. For closed isolator, it can be minimum grade D. Decision for the background should be based on risk assessment and documented in the CCS. Unless justified, higher grade of background should be used. Key consideration in the risk assessment for background include decontamination program, extent of automation, impact of glove manipulation, impacting first air, impact due to loss of glove integrity, transfer of material. Airflow studies to be performed at interfaces of open isolators and demonstrate absence of air ingress. If you look at the background of RABS, the background should be minimum grade B. A4 pattern studies should be performed to demonstrate absence of air ingress during interventions. If you look at the glove material requirement for isolators, material should demonstrate appropriate mechanical and chemical resistance. Frequency of glove replacement should be defined in the CCS. Leak testing at defined intervals with suitable methodology, generally at the beginning and the end of each batch or campaign. Additional leak test may be needed based on the length of the campaign. Integrity monitoring to include visual inspection with each use or manipulation that may affect the integrity. For manual processing activities for smaller batches, frequency of integrity might vary like beginning of each manufacturing session and integrity testing at periodic intervals. So if you look at the glove material for wraps, glove materials should be sterilized before installation or biocontaminated using validated method prior to each manufacturing campaign. If exposed to background, environment during operation, disinfection using defined methodology following each exposure. Visually examined with each use, integrity testing be performed at periodic intervals. So, we are moving ahead with the decontamination of the barrier technologies. The decontamination method should be defined and controlled. Cleaning step prior to decontamination is essential. Any residue remaining may impact the decontamination. Evidence should be available that cleaning and decontamination agent do not have an impact on the product produced. If we look at the decontamination requirement of the isolators, bio-decontamination of interior should be automated, validated and controlled with defined cycle parameters and including sporocidal agent that is a gas or a vapor. Gloves be extended with fingers separated to ensure contact with the agent. Method used should render interior surface and critical zone of isolator free from viable organisms. For RABS, the decontamination should include routine application of sporicidal agent using validated method and demonstrated to robustly include all areas of interior surfaces and ensure suitable environment for processing. Moving ahead with clean room and clean air equipment qualification. Clean rooms and clean air equipment that is UDFs, RABs, isolators should be qualified and classified according to characteristics of environment as per EU GMP and X15. Cleanliness level at rest and operation should be maintained. Clean room qualification including classification should be clearly differentiated from environmental monitoring. The qualification Process of assessing level of compliance with its intended use as per Annex 15 should include filter leakage and integrity testing, airflow volume and velocity, air pressure difference, airflow direction and visualization, microbial airborne and surface contamination, temperature measurement, RS measurement, recovery testing and containment leak testing. If we look at the clean room classification, Method of assessing level of air cleanliness by measuring the total particle concentration. In the earlier documents, this total particle concentration has been mentioned as the non-viable particle concentration and details can be found in ISO 14644. Classification to be performed in order to avoid any impact on process or product quality. Initial qualification during simulated operations and requalification during APS. Measurement of particle greater than or equal to 0.5 and 5 micrometer for both at rest and in operation. When we say at rest, condition where installation of all utilities including HVAC and equipment is complete without personnel in the room, 
limit to be achieved after clean up period of completion of operation less than 20 minutes in the earlier guidance this limit was from 15 to 20 minutes now it has been changed to less than 20 minutes and in operation state is an installation of clean room is complete HVAC is operational equipment installed and operating maximum number of personnel present may be performed during APS sampling location and position minimum number of location and position should be as per ISO 14644 should also consider all critical processing zones like point of fill and stopper bowls based on the documented risk assessment and process knowledge should not pose as risk on operations if we look at the clean room classification the maximum permitted total particle concentration for classification has been provided in this table at rest and in operation both for 0.5 micrometer particles and greater than 5 micrometer particles classification using 5 micrometer particles may be considered where it is indicated by the CCS for grade D in operation limits are not defined manufacturer should establish the limits also if we see in the earlier documents greater than 5 micron particles were defined but now in this it is not specified and manufacturer has to identify those also if you can see the highlighted part the in operation limit of 5 micron particle has been relaxed a bit in the earlier document for grade B in operation it was 2900 where it is made as 2930 similarly at rest in grade C was 2900 so it has been made as 2930 29300 from 2900 and 29300 in grade D at rest to 29 from 2900 if we talk about the air speed speed of air supplied should be justified in qualification protocol including location of speed measurement should be designed to have unidirectional air movement at working height homogeneous air speed of 0.36 to 0.5 meter per second at working position unless scientifically justified in the CCS airflow visualization studies should correlate with air speed measurement if we look at the microbial concentration should be determined as part of clean room qualification sampling location should be based on risk assessment results of area classification air visualization study and process knowledge should be done both at rest and in operation this is the maximum permitted microbial concentration level during qualification so this limit has been unchanged from the previous document which determines the value in CFU settle plates be exposed for duration of operation and changed after maximum of four hours exposure time should be based on recovery studies and should not follow desiccation of the media all methods indicated for a specific grade should be used for qualifying the area of the specific grade if one of the method is not used or alternative method is used the approach should be appropriately justified limits are in if CFU if new technologies are used that should correlate with the CFU and should be documented for qualification of personal governing the limits of that particular table into the personal governing section should apply and sampling methods should not pose a risk of contamination to the operation if we look at the requalification requirements for the clean rooms and clean air equipment clean rooms should be periodically requalified the requalification should include the clean room classification including total particle concentration integrity test of the final filters air flow volume measurement measurement of air pressure difference between rooms air velocity test for grade B C D test should be performed as defined in the CCS required for filling zones supplied with unidirectional air for non unidirectional recovery testing should replace velocity testing and maximum time interval of requalification for grade A and B the requalification of clean room should be carried out for every six months and for grade C and D it should be carried out for 12 months requalification should be done following any remedial action to rectify out of compliance equipment facility or for changes to equipment or facility or process example of changes to be considered interruption of air movement which affects operation of installation change in clean room design or operational setting parameters of the HVAC special maintenance affecting operation of installation 
Now we look at the disinfection requirements of the clean room. Clean room should be cleaned and disinfected as per SOP. Prior cleaning to remove surface contamination should be performed before disinfection. More than one type of disinfecting agents should be employed to ensure different mode of action and combined usage is effective on bacteria and fungi. It should include periodic use of sporicidal agents. Monitoring to be done routinely to ensure effectiveness and change in the flora. Cleaning process should easily remove the residue of the disinfectants. The disinfection process should be validated. Validation should demonstrate suitability and effectiveness of disinfectants. Should support the in-use expiry period of prepared solutions. The sterile disinfectants and detergents be sterile prior to use in grade A and B area. It can also be sterile for grade C and D areas. If disinfectants are manufactured by the manufacturer itself, it should be monitored for microbial growth. Dilution to be stored in previously clean containers and stored for defined periods. If ready-made agents are used, result from the COA can be accepted based on vendor qualification. When fumigation of vapor disinfection, that is vapor phased H2O2 is used, effectiveness of fumigation agent and dispersion system be understood and validated. We move to the fifth part, that is the equipment part. Equipment design, return detailed description of design including PNID be available and form part of the initial qualification and kept up to date. URS should define the equipment monitoring requirements and confirmed during qualification. Process and equipment alarm should be acknowledged and evaluated for trends. Frequency of assessment should be based on criticality. Critical alarms to be reviewed immediately. Equipment fitting and services should be designed and installed so that operation, maintenance and repair can be performed from outside of the clean room as practicable. If maintenance is performed in clean room, precautions like restricting access to the specified person, defined requirements for additional cleaning, additional disinfection, environmental monitoring should be included. Sterilization of the equipment if required should be done after complete assembly wherever possible. Direct and indirect contact parts should be sterilized. The cleaning process should be validated to remove any residue or debris that impact the effectiveness of the disinfectant used. Minimize the chemical, microbial and particulate contamination during and prior to disinfection. All equipments like sterilizers, AHUs, water systems should be qualified, monitored and have a PPM program that is planned preventive maintenance program. Unplanned maintenance should include assessment of potential impact to sterility of the product. On completion of maintenance, their return to the original state should be approved. Conveyor belt should not pass through partition between grade A and B and processing area of lower air cleanliness unless belt is continuously sterilized like the sterilizing tunnel. Particle counters including sampling tubing should be qualified. Manufacturer recommendation should be used for tubes diameter and bend radii. The tube length should be less than 1 meter with minimum bends. Portable particle counters with short Sample tubing should be used for classification. Isokinetic sampling heads should be used in unidirectional airflow sampling systems and should be positioned as close as possible to the sample air representing of critical location. Isokinetic sampling head means the sampling head designed to, to disturb the air a little as possible so that the same particulates go into nozzle as would have passed the air if nozzle had not been there. That is sampling condition in which mean velocity of air entering sample probe inlet is nearly same plus minus 20% of the mean velocity. Moving to the next part after equipment, the sixth part that is the utilities. If we look into the utilities, it provides the general requirements. It provides the details of the water system, steam used as a direct sterilizing agent, gases and vacuum systems, heating, cooling and hydraulic systems. With the, moving with the general requirements, nature of control on utilities should be commensurate with the risk to product quality. It should be determined via risk assessment and documented as a part of CCS. High risk utilities are the utilities which are directly contact with the product like water for washing and rinsing, gases and steam for sterilization, 
contact materials that will be ultimately part of the product, contact surfaces that come in direct contact with the product, directly impacting the product. The utility designs should be appropriately designed, installed, qualified, operated, maintained and monitored to ensure it functions as expected. Pipes, ducts and other utilities should not be present in clean rooms. If unavoidable, should be installed not to create recess and difficult to clean unsealed openings. Should allow cleaning and disinfection of outer surface of pipes. The trending of results of critical parameters and attributes of high risk utilities be subjected to regular trend analysis. Record of utility installation should be maintained throughout the life cycle. Should include the current drawings, schematics, constructions, material risk and specification. Important attributes are pipeline flow directions, slope, diameter and length, tank and vessel details, valves, filters, drains, sampling and user points. If we look at the water system in the utilities, the design constructed, installed, commissioned and qualified and monitored to minimize risk of particulates, microbial contamination, proliferation, and endotoxin pyrogen. Example, sloping of pipe for complete drainage, avoiding dead legs. It should be qualified for appropriate level of physical, chemical and microbial control considering the seasonal variation. If filters are included, special attention should be given to their modification, monitoring and maintenance. Water produced should comply with relevant pharmacopoeia. The water flow should remain turbulent through the pipes to minimize microbial adhesion and biofilms. Flow rate should be established during qualification and routinely monitored. For WFI, that is water for injection, it should be produced from water meeting specification defined during qualification stored and distributed which minimize risks of microbial growth. Constant circulation at a temperature above 70 degree. Should be produced by distillation or equivalent process such as RO coupled with nanofiltration, ultrafiltration, electrode ionization that is EDI. Should include continuous monitoring system like TOC and conductivity. Sensor location should be based on risk. Where storage tanks are the hydrophobic battery retentive filters Filters should not be the source of contamination. They should be integrity tested before installation and after use. Controls in place to prevent condensate formation, that is heating. Sterilization, disinfection and regeneration of the water system should be carried out as per predetermined schedule and remedial action following any out of specification results. Disinfection should be followed by validated rinsing and flushing procedure. Water should be tested after disinfection regeneration. Chemical results should be approved before use. Microbial results verified and approved before batches manufacturing using water. Regular ongoing chemical and microbial monitoring of water should be performed. Alert levels should be based on qualification, periodically assessed on qualification and routine working data. Sampling program should reflect the requirement of CCS based on qualification at outlets and point of use at specified interval, potential worst case location, one representative sample every day of water used in the manufacturing process, an alert level excursion should be documented and reviewed, investigated to determine if excursion is single or indicative of adverse trend or systemic deterioration. Action limit excursion should be investigated to determine root cause and impact on quality of product. Moving with utilities, the steam used as direct sterilizing agent. Feed water to pure steam generator should be appropriately purified. Generator should be designed and qualified and operated to ensure quality of steam meets defined chemical and endotoxin levels. Steam used as direct sterilizing agent should be of suitable quality and should not contain additives at level which could cause deterioration. Steam condensate for pure steam generator should meet the current monograph of WFI or relevant pharmacopoeia. Microbial testing is not mandatory. Suitable sampling schedule should be in place to ensure representative pure steam samples are obtained for analysis on regular basis. Other aspects of quality should be assessed periodically against validated parameters. 
they should include non condensable gases dryness value that is dryness fraction superheat now the gases in vacuum system gases that come in direct contact with product container surface should be of appropriate chemical particulate and microbial quality all relevant parameters including oil and water content should be specified considering the use and the type of gas design of the generation system and applicable monographs product quality requirements gas used in aseptic processing should be filtered through sterilizing grade filter with 0.22 micron pore size at point of use if filter is used on batch basis or product vessel vent filter filter should be integrity tested and results included as a part of batch certification and release any transfer pipe tubing located in the final sterilizing filter should be sterilized microbial monitoring of gas should be performed periodically at point of use when backflow from vacuum or pressure system is a potential risk mechanism should be in place to prevent backflow when vacuum system is shut off heating and cooling and hydraulic system major items of equipment associated with hydraulic heating and cooling systems where possible be located outside the filling room they should be appropriate control to contain any spillage or contamination with the system fluids any leaks from these system that would present a risk to the product should be detectable that is an indication of system for leakage moving with the next part that is personal training and qualification the firm should ensure availability of sufficient appropriate personnel suitably qualified trained and experienced in manufacturing and testing of sterile products or for any other specific manufacturing technologies used all personnel including ones performing cleaning maintenance should receive regular training governing qualification and assessment on relevant disciplines training should include basic elements of microbiology hygiene clean room practices contamination control aseptic techniques and protection of products level of training be based on criticality of function and area of working person working in grade a and b be trained on aseptic governing and behaviors compliance with aseptic governing procedures be confirmed by assessment and periodic reassessment at least annually should involve both visual and microbial assessments locations like gloved fingers forearms chest and hood that is face masks and forehead <clears throat> the personal hygiene requirements high standard of personal hygiene and cleanliness are essential operators should be instructed to report any health condition or ailment which may cause contamination of the product actions to be taken should be provided by designated competent person and described in the sop staff engaged in processing of human or animal tissues or of cultures of microorganism other than used in current process should not enter clean areas unless clearly defined with effective decontamination and entry procedure access to the clean room wrist watches makeup jewelry other personal items like mobiles are not allowed in the clean rooms company supplied e devices like mobile phones tablets solely for the purpose of clean rooms are acceptable if suitably designed to permit cleaning and disinfection their use and disinfection be documented in the ccs access to grade a and b be restricted to qualified persons having passed governing assessment and participated in successful aps only minimum number of persons should be present in the clean rooms the maximum allowed number should be determined documented and considered during initial qualification and aps unqualified person that is building contractors regulatory inspectors should not enter the grade b or grade a if needed in exceptional cases process be defined in the sop for making them to enter supervised by quality person or qualified person and recorded in the pqs procedure should be in place for disqualification of person not working in clean rooms based on assessment identification of adverse trend for personal monitoring and or implicated in the failed aps once disqualified retraining and requalification be completed before permitting any aseptic practices for operators entering grade b clean room or performing interventions in grade a zone this requalification should include participation in the successful aps the governing requirement for personnel 
SOP should be in place for clean room gowning and hand washing. Clothing to be chosen to prevent shedding due to operator's movement. Clothing and its quality should be appropriate to the process and grade of area. Gowning be performed in change rooms of appropriate grade. Outdoor clothing including socks should not be brought into change rooms leading to grade B and grade C. Single or two piece facility trouser covering full length of arms and legs and facility socks covering feet should be used. Facility suit and socks should not present risk of contamination to the gowning area. Garments be wore in a way to protect product from contamination. When clothing chosen needs to be provide protection to the operator, it should not compromise with protection of the product. Operator entering the grade B or grade A should gown in clean, sterilized, protective garments including eye covering and mask of appropriate size at each entry. Maximum period for which sterilized gown be worn before replacement during a shift be defined during garment qualification. Garment should be checked visually for cleanliness and integrity immediately prior and after gowning. Integrity to be checked at exit. For sterilized garment, ensure they have been sterilized, are within the whole time and pack is visually inspected for integrity before use. Reusable garment should be replaced if found damaged or set frequency defined during qualification. Qualification of garments should consider garment testing requirements including damage that may not be identified by visual inspection. Garments and gloves should be changed immediately if they become damaged and present any risk of contamination. Gloves should be regularly disinfectant during operation. The grade wise gowning requirements for grade B including interventions in grade A Dedicated garments be wore under a sterilized suit before gowning. Sterilized, non-powdered, rubber or plastic gloves be worn while donning the sterile garments. Sterile headgear should enclose all hair including facial. When separate, it should be tucked into the neck of sterile suit. Sterile face mask and sterile eye cover that is goggles should be worn to cover all the facial skin. Appropriate sterilized footwear be used. Trouser legs should be tucked inside the footwear. Garment sleeves be tucked into the second pair of sterile gloves worn over the first one. Particle shedding and particle retention of garments be assessed during qualification. Garments should be packed and folded in a way to allow operators to gown without contacting the outer surface and prevent garment from touching the floor. For the grade C, hair, beard and moustache should be covered. Single or two piece trouser suit gathered at wrist and with high neck and appropriately disinfectant shoes or overshoes. For grade D, hair, beard and moustache be covered, general protective suit and disinfected shoes. Appropriate measures should be taken to avoid any ingress of contaminants from outside the clean area. Appropriate measures be taken to avoid ingress of contaminants from outside. Additional gowning includes gloves should be worn in grade C and D while performing activities that are considered to be a contamination risk and identified in the CCS. The garment cleaning. Reusable clean area clothing should be cleaned in a laundry adequately segregated from the production operations using a qualified process ensuring clothing is not damaged or contaminated by fibers by repeated laundry process. Laundry should not introduce a risk of contamination or cross-contamination. After washing and before packing, garments should be checked visually for damage and visual cleanliness. Garment management process should be evaluated as a part of garment qualification program and should include a maximum number of laundry and sterilization cycles. The personal movement, non-critical activities to production should be kept to a minimum in clean areas. Movement of personnel should be slow, controlled and methodical. Operators should adhere to a specific aseptic techniques at all times. Movement adjacent to critical zone should be restricted and obstruction to path of unidirectional flow should be avoided. Airflow visualization studies should be considered as a part of operators training program. Moving to the production and specific technologies specific parts, it includes Terminally sterilized products, aseptic preparation and processing, finishing of the sterilized products,
sterilization form fill seal which is also called ffs blow fill seal which is called as bfs lyophilization also known as the freeze drying and closed system and single use system moving ahead first with the terminally sterilized products preparation of components and materials should be done at least in grade d for the terminally sterilized product if there is a high or unusual risk the preparation should be done in grade c preparation of ointment cream suspensions and emulsions to be done in grade c before terminal sterilization primary packing containers and components should be cleaned using validated procedures filling of components filling of products for terminal sterilization should be carried out in grade c if ccs identifies unusual risk of contamination from environment that is slow filling operation wide neck containers then filling to be done in grade a in c background processing of bulk should include filtration with microorganism retaining filter prior to filling in the final container there should be maximum permissible time between preparation and filling examples of operations and grades for terminally sterilized operations for example in grade a filling of products when usually at risk grade c preparation of solution when usually at risk or generally filling of products and grade d preparation of solution and components for subsequent filling moving ahead to the second that is aseptic preparation and processing aseptic process should be clearly defined risk should be identified assessed and controlled ccs should define the acceptance criteria of controls monitoring requirements and effectiveness methods to control risk should describe accepted residual risk should be documented precaution should be taken to minimize contamination during preparation of aseptic environment during process stages until product is sealed in the final container presence of materials liable for particle fiber generation should be minimized use of wraps isolators should be considered to reduce critical intervention in grade a robotics and automation should be considered to eliminate human critical interventions sip dry tunnel automated lyophilizer loading for sterile products that cannot be filtered all the products and components contact equipments to be sterilized should be all raw materials sterilized or aseptically added bulk solution or intermediates to be sterilized unwrapping assembly and preparation of sterile equipment component and ancillary items should be performed in grade a with b background filling line setup and filling of sterile product performed in grade a with b background preparation and filling of sterile products such as ointment creams and suspensions should be carried out in grade a with b background when products and components are exposed to environment and product is not filtered or terminally sterilized aseptic connections should be performed in grade a with b background unless subsequently sterilized in place or conducted with validated intrinsic sterile connection b assessed and effectiveness verified these are the examples of operations and grades of aseptic operations and process for example in grade a aseptic assembly of filling equipment connections aseptic compounding removal and cooling of unprotected sterilizers etc in grade b background support for grade a conveying or staging while protected from surrounding environment grade c preparation of solution to be filtered including sampling and dispensing and grade d cleaning of equipment handling of components assembling of hepa etc aseptic manipulations should be minimized through designs such as pre assembled and sterilized equipment product contact piping should be pre assembled and sterilized in place the interventions there should be an authorized list of allowed interventions both inherent and corrective and it should be qualified it should be carefully designed to minimize risk of contamination it should consider impact on air flow and critical surfaces it should minimize incursion by operator and during intervention sop with list of inherent and corrective interventions be evaluated via risk assessment and aps non qualified interventions be used in exception with consideration of risk details should be recorded and fully investigated under the pqs 
should be assessed during the batch disposition decision. Each stoppage or intervention should be sufficiently documented with associated time, duration of event and operator involved in the BMR. Duration of each aseptic duration process should be limited to defined and validated maximum time. Holding time between equipment, component and container cleaning, drying and sterilization. Holding time for sterilized equipment, component and container before use and during filling. Holding time for decontaminated environments such as wraps and isolator before use. Time between start of operation and its sterilization or filtration through a filter through to the end of the process. There should be a maximum permissible time for each product that makes into account its composition and storage. Hold time for sterilized products prior to filling. Aseptic processing time. Filling time. Aseptic operations including APS should be observed at regular basis by person with expertise in aseptic process to verify correct performance of operations including operator behavior and address inappropriate practices. Moving to the next point that is finishing of the sterile product. So open primary packing containers maintain under grade A with appropriate background. Containers should be closed with appropriate validated methods. Integrity testing that is the visual inspection alone is not considered acceptable integrity test method. Frequency of testing should be based on knowledge and experience. Scientifically justified sampling plans should be used for integrity testing. Sample size be used on supplier management, packing composition and process knowledge. It, if it is closed by fusion, that is glass ampules, BFS and small volume containers of less than 100 ml, then 100% integrity testing has to be done. If it is closed by fusion and large volume that is more than 100 ml, reduced testing based on rationale can be adopted. Closed by any other than fusion, then checked using validated methods, the integrity. Containers sealed under vacuum to be tested for vacuum maintenance after a predetermined period prior to release and during shelf life. Container closure validation should take into consideration any transportation or shipping requirements. If equipment used to crimp vials generate large quantity of non-viable particles, measures to prevent contamination like locating equipment as physically separate station equipped with adequate air extraction should be taken. While capping of aseptically filled products can be undertaken as aseptic process using sterilized caps or as clean process outside the aseptic core if it is used, vials should be protected by grade A till leaving aseptic processing area and thereafter stoppered vials should be protected with grade A air supply until cap is crimped. Supporting background of grade A should be at least grade D. Vials with missing or displaced stoppers should be rejected prior to capping. If capping is manual, it is performed under grade A either in isolator or grade A with B background. It is qualified automated methods for stopper heights detection should be in place. If human intervention at capping station, technological and organizational measures should prevent direct contact with vial and minimize contamination. Wraps and isolators are beneficial in assuring the required condition and minimizing the contamination. Inspection and defects. All fill containers to be inspected individually for containment or defects. Defect classification and criticality should be defined during qualification based on risk and historical knowledge. Consider potential impact on patient and route of administration. Defect types be categorized and batch performance be analyzed. Trends are prepared. Any critical or unusual defect should trigger an investigation. Defect library should be generated and maintained capturing all known defects and used for training. Critical defects should be identified during any subsequent sampling and inspection of acceptable containers. Any critical defects subsequently indicate failure of original inspection process. Trending of defects should result. Results should be recorded and defect types and numbers trended. Result levels should Result levels for various defect types be trended uh, using statistical principles. 
impact to product on the market should be assessed inspection and defects continued where manual inspection is used under suitable and controlled elimination of background inspection rates should be controlled and qualified annual visual inspection of the qualification for all operators performing inspection wearing lenses if normally they won undertaking using appropriate samples from defect library considering worst cases example inspection time line speed for conveyor system container size or fatigue and considering eyesight check operator distractions it should be minimized there should be frequent breaks of appropriate duration and it should be taken appropriately for automated inspection method should be validated to detect known defects and should be equal to or better than the manual methods the performance of equipment should be challenged prior to start up and at regular intervals the product and specific technologies we move to the sterilization part which considers the general consideration sterilization by heat which includes moist heat sterilization and dry heat sterilization sterilization by radiation sterilization by ethylene oxide and filter sterilization so we move ahead for sterilization the general consideration finished product should be terminally sterilized using a validated process where possible this provides a greater assurance of sterility than a sterile filtration process and or aseptic processing where terminal sterilization is not possible consideration to using post aseptic processing terminal heat treatment combination with aseptic process to be given selection design location of equipment and cycle program for sterilization should be based on scientific principles of data demonstrating repeatability and reliability of sterilization process all parameters be defined and when critical be controlled monitored and recorded validation of the sterilization process all process should be validated validated studies should consider product composition storage condition maximum time between start product of material preparation to be sterilized and its sterilization before adopting any sterilization process its suitability to the product and equipment and its efficacy in consistently achieving the desired sterilizing condition in all parts of each type of load should be validated by physical measurement and biological indicators whole of the product and surface of the equipment and component should be subjected to the required treatment for effective sterilization and the process should be designed accordingly particular attention be given when adopted sterilization method is not described in current pharmacopeia or when used for product which is not a simple aqueous solution heat sterilization is the method of choice wherever possible validation of the load patterns be established for all sterilization process and subjected to periodic revalidation maximum and minimum loads be considered as part of overall load validation strategy revalidation validity of the sterilizing process should be reviewed and verified at scheduled intervals based on risk heat sterilization cycles should be revalidated with a minimum frequency of at least annually for worst case loads other load patterns be revalidated as justified in the ccs routine operating parameters should be established and adhered to for all sterilization process example parameters and loading patterns mechanisms be in place to detect non conforming sterilization cycles any failed or deviated from the validated parameter cycle should be investigated there should be clear means to differentiate product equipment and components which have not been sterilized containers trays items of equipment be clearly labeled or e tracked with material name batch number and identification of whether sterilized or not indicators like autoclave tapes and irradiation indicators may be used to indicate whether a batch has been passed the sterilization process the indicators indicate sterilization process has occurred or not and not the product sterility sterilization records should be available for each sterilization run each cycle should have a unique identifier they should be reviewed and approved as a part of batch release or certification procedure where possible materials equipment and components be sterilized by validated methods appropriate 
to specific material. Suitable protection after sterilization should be provided to prevent recontamination. Biological indicators. Suitable biological indicators be placed at appropriate location to consider as additional method to support validation. It should be stored and used as per manufacturer's instruction. Positive controls should be tested for each sterilization cycle. Strict precautions should be taken to avoid transferring microbial contamination to the manufacturing. Biological indicator results in isolation should not override other critical parameters. Reliability of the BIs is important. Supply should be qualified and transportation and storage conditions be controlled. Prior to use of new lot, the population, purity and identity of indicator organisms of the batch to be verified. For other critical parameters like the D value, the Z value, the certificate of analysis provided by qualified supplier can be used. If sterilized items are not used immediately, this should be stored using appropriately sealed packing and a maximum hold time should be established. Components packed with multiple sterilized packing layers need to be stored in clean rooms if sterile pack allows items to be readily disinfected for transfer to grade A. Example, multiple sterile coverings to be removed at each transfer. If protection is achieved by contaminant in sealed packing, process be done prior to sterilization. If materials, equipment, components are sterilized in sealed packing and transferred to grade A, it should be done using validated methods like airlocks or pass-through hatches with disinfection of proper sealed pack. For items that cannot be sterilized, a validated disinfection and transfer process should be in place. These items should be included in the environmental monitoring program. The use of rapid transfer port technology should also be considered. Now moving to the sterilization by heat, each cycle should be recorded electronically or a hard copy on equipment with suitable accuracy and precision. Controls be in place to detect a cycle not conforming to the validated parameters and abort or fail the cycle. Position of temperature probes used for controlling and for recording to be determined during the validation and based on the system design. Validation should demonstrate suitability of probe location and include verification of function and location by use of independent monitoring probe located at same position during validation. Whole load should reach the required temperature before the measurement of sterilizing time period starts. For sterilization cycle, controlled using a reference probe within the load, specific consideration should be given to ensuring the load probe temperature is controlled within defined temperature range prior to cycle commencement. After completion of high temperature phase of sterilization cycle, precautions should be taken against contamination of a sterilized load during cooling. Any cooling liquid or gas coming in contact with product or sterilized material should be sterilized. In cases where parametric release is authorized, robust system be applied to product life cycle validation and routine monitoring of manufacturing process. System should be periodically reviewed. Moving to the moist heat sterilization can be achieved by using steam, direct or indirect contact or superheated water that is cascade or immersion cycle for containers that may be damaged by other methods. For porous cycle that is hard goods, Time, temperature and pressure should be used to monitor the process. Each item sterilized be inspected for damage, packing material integrity and moisture on removal from autoclave. Any item found not fit should be removed from area and investigated. For the validation of cycles, it should include a calculation of the equilibration time, exposure time, correlation of pressure and temperature and maximum temperature range during exposure. For fluid load, that superheated water used as a medium of heat transfer, heated water must constantly reach all the required contact points. Initial qualification should include temperature mapping of entire load. There should be routine check that nozzles are not blocked and drains free from debris. And for validation of fluid cycles, it should include temperature mapping, heat penetration and reproducibility study. All parts of load should heat up and achieve desired temperature for specified time. 
routine probes be correlated to worst case position identified during qualification critical processing parameters should be subjected to defined limits including tolerances and confirmed as a part of validation and routine acceptance criteria items to be sterilized other than the products in the sealed containers should be dry packed in protective barrier system which allows removal of air and penetration of steam all loaded items should be dry upon removal from sterilizer load dryness be confirmed by visual inspection as an acceptance for autoclaves capable of pre vacuum sterilization cycle temperature should be recorded at drain throughout the sterilization period for sip system temperature should be recorded at condensate drain locations throughout the sterilization period leak test on sterilizing system be carried out periodically that is weekly when vacuum phase is a part of cycle or post sterilization system is returned to pressure lower than environment surrounding the sterilizer air removal if included air purging adequate assurance of air removal prior to and during sterilization example porous autoclave loads lyophilizers for autoclave include an air removal test on daily basis or an air detector system load should be designed to support effective air removal and be free from draining distortion and damage of non rigid containers that are terminally sterilized like the bfs and the ffs be prevented by cycle design and control that is correct pressure heating and cooling rates and loading patterns where sip systems are used that is fixed pipe work and lyophilizer system should be appropriately designed and validated to assure all parts of systems are subjected to required treatment the system should be monitored for temperature pressure and time at appropriate location during routine use these locations should be representative of slowest to heat during initial and routine validation once sterilization by sip it should remain integral and held under positive pressure or equipped with sterilizing vent filter prior to use continuing with the next type that is the dry heat sterilization it utilizes high temperature of air or gas it is useful for difficult to eliminate thermally robust contaminants such as endotoxin and pyrogen it is often used during component preparation used to remove thermally robust contaminants and component preparation for aseptic filling combination of time and temperature for product component equipment exposure should produce adequate and reproducible level of lethality and pyrogen inactivation process can be operated in an oven or a continuous tunnel dry heat sterilization be configured to ensure that air flow protects integrity and performance of grade a sterilizing zone by maintaining the differential pressure and air flow throughout the tunnel air pressure difference profile be assessed any change be checked for impact on the heating profile all temperature all air supplied to the channel should pass through hepa filter and periodic test be performed to demonstrate filter integrity at least biannually any tunnel part that come into contact with sterilized components should be appropriately sterilized or disinfected critical process parameters that should be considered during validation and routine processing include pelt speed or dwell time temperature minimum and maximum temperature heat penetration of the material or the article heat distribution or uniformity and air flows when a thermal depyrination process is used validation studies be performed to demonstrate that process provides a suitable fh value and a 3 log reduction in endotoxin if this is attained no additional requirement to demonstrate sterilization containers spiked with endotoxin be used during validation and full reconciliation should be performed spiking material should be representative of the material normally processed endotoxin quantification and recovery efficiency should be demonstrated dry heat ovens employed to sterilize primary packing components starting materials or active substance can be used for other processes also they should be maintained at a positive pressure relative to the lower grade areas throughout the sterilization and post sterilization hold process unless integrity of packing is maintained all air entering the oven should pass through an hepa filter 
critical process parameter that should be considered in qualification and routine processing should include but not limited to temperature, exposure time, chamber pressure, air speed, air quality, heat penetration of the material, heat distribution, load pattern and configuration of articles. Moving to the sterilization by radiation, sterilization by radiation is used mainly on heat sensitive materials and products. UV radiation is not an acceptable sterilization by radiation method. Refer Annex 2 for further details. Validation should ensure that effects of variation in density of product and packages are considered. Then sterilization by ethylene oxide. This method should only be used when no other method is practicable. Process validation should demonstrate that there is no damaging effect on the product due to the use of this gas. Condition and time allowed for degassing should result in reduction of any residual gas. Direct contact between gas and microbial cells is essential. Precautions be taken to avoid the presence of organisms likely to be enclosed in materials such as crystals or dried proteins. The nature, porosity and quantity of packing materials can slightly affect the process. Before exposure, materials should be brought into equilibrium with humidity and temperature required by the process. When steam is used to condition the load, it should be appropriate quality. The time required for this should be balanced against the opposing need to minimize the time for sterilization. A sterilizing cycle should be monitored with suitable biological indicators with appropriate number of test units distributed throughout the load at defined location shown to be the worst case during validation. Critical process variables to be considered as part of sterilization process validation but are not limited to EO gas concentration or EO gas pressure, amount of the ethylene oxide gas used or the relative humidity temperature, exposure time. After sterilization, the load should be aerated to allow the ethylene oxide gas to dissolve to predetermined level. Aeration should be validated and occur within sterilized chamber or in separate chamber. Moving to the filter sterilization of the products which cannot be sterilized in the final container. If the product cannot be sterilized in the final container, Solution liquid should be sterilized by filtration through sterilizing grade filter with a size of 0.22 micrometer or less which should be validated and aseptically filled in the previously sterile containers. Filter used should be compatible with the product and as described in the marketing authorization. Bio burden reduction pre-filter and sterilizing grade filters may be used at multiple points prior to primary sterilizing filter. Second filtration through sterilizing filter immediately prior to filling should be considered. The selection of compounds for filtration system and their interconnection including pre-filters should be based on the CQAs of the product justified and documented. The filtration system should minimize generation of fibers and particles do not contribute to the unacceptable level of impurities or otherwise alter the quality and efficacy of the product. Filter characteristics should be compatible with fluid and not adversely affected by product to be filtered. Adsorption of product components and extraction leaching of filter components be evaluated. The filtration system should be designed to allow operation within validated process parameters and maintain sterility of the filtrate, minimize number of aseptic connections between sterilizing filter and final product filling, allow cleaning procedures, sterilization procedures including SIP to be conducted, permit in-place integrity testing of the sterilizing filter as an closed system prior to following filtration. In place integrity testing methods be selected to avoid any adverse impact on the product quality. Sterile filtration of liquids should be validated in accordance with the pharmacopoeial requirements. Validation can be grouped by different strengths or product variations but should be done under worst case conditions. The rationale of grouping should be justified and documented. During filter validation, the product to be filtered should be used for bacterial retention testing of the sterilizing filter. If not suitable for bacterial retention testing, 
a suitable surrogate product be justified for use in the test the challenge organism used for bacterial retention test be justified filtration parameters to be considered and established during validation the wetting fluid for filter integrity testing should be based on filter manufacturer's recommendation or the fluid should be filtered appropriate integrity test value specification be established if system is flushed or integrity tested in situ with a fluid other than the product appropriate actions taken to avoid any deleterious effect on the product quality filtration process conditions which should include the fluid pre filtration holding time filter conditioning maximum filtration time maximum operating pressure flow rate maximum filtration volume temperature time taken to filter a known volume of bulk and pressure difference across the filter routine process control should be implemented to ensure adherence to the validated parameters result of these checks to be included in batch record including time taken to filter a known volume of bulk and a pressure difference across the filter any significant difference in validated parameters during routine manufacturing should be noted and investigated integrity of the sterilized filter assembly should be verified by integrity testing before use which is pre use post sterilization integrity test or also called as the pupsic sterilizing grade filter to be subject to a non destructive integrity test post use prior to removal from the filter housing test process should be validated and results should correlate to the microbial retention capability established during validation example of test that are used include bubble point diffusive flow water intrusion or pressure hold test pupsit may not always be possible due to process constraints that is filtration of very small volumes of solution does an alternative approach be used through risk assessment points to consider in this risk assessment include in depth knowledge of the uh, in depth knowledge and control of sterilization process to ensure potential damage of filter is minimized in depth knowledge and control of the supply chain to include contact sterilization facilities define transport mechanisms packaging of the sterilized filter in depth process knowledge such as specific product type particulate burden any risk of impact on filter integrity values such as potential to alter integrity testing values and prevent deletion pre filtration and processing step prior to the sterilizing filter which would remove particulate burden and clarify the product prior to sterile filtration integrity testing of critical sterile air and gas vent filters testing after use with filter remaining in the filter assembly non critical air or gas vent filters should be confirmed and recorded at appropriate intervals gas filters are in place for extended periods it should be carried out at installation and prior to replacement the maximum duration of use be specified and monitored based on risk example considering the maximum number of uses and sterilization cycles permitted for gas filtration avoid unintended moistening or wetting of the filter if sterilizing filtration process has been validated as a system consisting of multiple filters filtration system is considered as single sterilizing unit and all filters should pass the integrity testing after use if redundant filtration system where second filter is present as a backup to the first post use integrity test of primary filter should be performed and if integral testing is not necessary for the second filter in event of failure of the post use integrity test of the primary filter test on the secondary filters should be considered in conjunction with investigation and risk assessment bio burden samples should be taken from bulk product and immediately prior to final sterile filtration for redundant filters it should be taken after first filter system for taking samples should be designed so that not to introduce contamination liquid sterilizing filters should be discarded after processing of single batch and same filter should not be used for more than one working day unless such use has been validated 
where campaign manufacturing of a product has been appropriately justified in the CCS and validated, the filter should assess and document the risk associated with the duration of filter use, conduct and document effectively validation qualification studies to demonstrate that duration of filter use do not compromise the performance, document the maximum validated duration of use of filter, and implement controls to ensure that filters are not used beyond validated maximum duration. Records should be maintained. Implement controls to ensure that filters contaminated with fluid or cleaning agent residues are considered defective and removed from use. Moving to the product and uh, production and specific technologies, it defines first the form fill seal that is FFS. Blow fill seal that is BFS, lyophilization that is freeze drying, closed system and single use system. For the FFS, an automated filling process of terminally sterilized products which constructs primary container out of a flat roll of packing film simultaneously filling and sealing in continuous process. Condition of FFS machine should comply to the environmental requirements of this NX. Contamination of packing films be minimized by controls during fabrication, supply, handling. Procedure should be in place to ensure films meet the defined specifications. Sampling frequency, bio burden and endotoxin pyrogen levels be defined, controlled and considered in the CCS. Attention to understanding the operation includes setup, filling, sealing, cutting to understand, validate, monitor and control the CPPs. Procedure for verification, monitoring and recording of CPPs and equipment operations should be applied. Any product contact gases that is to inflate the container be filtered as close to the point of use. Quantity of gas and filtration system be verified periodically. SOPs should define that how forming and sealing issues are detected and rectified. Rejected units and sealing issues be recorded and investigated. The controls identified during qualification should be aligned with the CCS. Aspects to consider include determination of the boundaries of critical zone, environmental control and monitoring, both of the machine and the background, personal governing requirements, integrity testing of the product field lines and filtration system, Duration of the batch or filling campaign, control of the packing films, CIP and SIP of the equipment, machine operations, setting of alarm management, appropriate maintenance procedures be established based on the risk, any issue be documented and investigated. CPP of SFS should be determined during qualification and should include setting of uniform package dimensions and cutting. Setting maintenance monitoring and validated forming temperatures, times and pressure. Setting maintenance monitoring of validated sealing temperature, time and pressure. Environment and product temperature. Batch specific testing of package seal strength and uniformity. Setting of correct filling volumes, speed and uniformity. Setting of additional printing, embossing and debossing. Method and parameters for integrity testing of filled containers. Now we move to the blow fill seal part which is a technology by which the containers are formed for thermoplastic granulate filled with product and sealed in a continuous integrated automated operation. BFS equipment used for terminal sterilized product should be installed at least in grade D. If it is used for aseptic processing it should be installed in grade C provided grade A by B clothing is used. Microbial monitoring of operators be performed as per QRM and limits frequencies is considered for activities performed. For shuttle type of equipment, parison is an open environment and therefore areas of parison extrusion, blow molding and sealing be grade A at the critical zone. Filling environment be designed and maintained to meet grade A for viable and total particle both as stressed and in operation. For the rotary type of equipment, parison is a closed environment. Filling environment be grade A for viable and total particles both at rest and operation. In operation monitoring of total particles of BFS is not expected. 
However, data be available to demonstrate grade A environment during operation. Viable monitoring be risk based. In operation, viable monitoring for full duration including equipment assembly should be carried out. For rotary BFS, monitoring of critical fielding zone may not be possible. The environmental control and monitoring should consider moving parts and complex airflow paths of BFS process and effect of high heat outputs of process. Example, by airflow visualization studies. EM should also consider factors like air filter configuration and integrity, cooling systems integrity, equipment design, air of other gases in contact with critical surface be appropriately filtered, quality of air and effectiveness of filtration system be verified periodically, particulate or microbial contamination of granulate be prevented by design, control and maintenance of granulate storage sampling and distribution system. Capability of extrusion system for sterility assurance be understood and validated. Sampling frequency, bio burden, endotoxin, pyrogen of raw material polymer be defined in controlled as per the CCS. Interventions requiring cessation of filling or extrusion, molding and sealing, re-sterilization of the filling machine should be clearly defined and well described in the aseptic filling procedure and included in the APS. SOPs should describe detection and rectification of issues during blowing, forming and sealing. Rejected units or sealing issues be recorded and investigated. Appropriate maintenance procedure be established based on risk. Controls identified during qualification be aligned with the CCS. Aspects to consider include determination of boundaries of critical zone, environmental controls and monitoring, machine and background, personal governing requirements, integrity testing of product filling lines and filtration system, duration of batch filling and filling campaign, control on polymer granulate, CIP and SIP of the equipment, machine operation, setting and alarm management. The molds used to form containers are critical and any change or modification should result in an assessment of finished product container integrity and supported by validation. Any issue be documented and investigated. CPPs of the BFS be determined should include CIP and SIP of the product pipeline, setting maintenance monitoring of extrusion parameters, setting maintenance monitoring of mold temperature including rate of cooling, preparation and sterilization of ancillary components added to molded units, environmental control, cleaning, sterilization, monitoring of extrusion, filling areas, batch specific testing of packing wall thickness, setting of the correct filling volumes, setting of additional printing embossing, method and parameter for integrity testing of 100% of all filled containers, setting of cutters or punches to remove waste plastic. Procedure for verification, monitoring and recording of CPPs should be applied and return process include addition of components to molded containers that is caps to LVP, components to be decontaminated under grade A for aseptic process. Moving to the lyophilization which is also called as the freeze drying. It is a physical chemical drying process designed to remove solvents by sublimation from aqueous and non-aqueous system. It is a critical process step. All activities that can affect the product sterility are regarded as extension of the aseptic process. It should be designed to minimize operator intervention. Equipment and its process should be designed to ensure product sterility is maintained during lyophilization and completion of lyophilization. All control measures should be in place as determined by the CCS. Sterilization of lyophilizers and associated equipments should be validated. Holding times between sterilization cycles challenged during the APS. The sterilization of lyophilizers, it should be sterilized regularly. The frequency should be based on the design and the risks. The re-sterilization performed following maintenance of the cleaning. The sterilization of lyophilizers and associated equipment protected from contamination after sterilization. Manually loaded or unloaded with no barrier sterilized before each load. 
so these requirements of the lyophilizers that are highlighted in yellow they have been provided a timeline of two years for implementation that is till 25th of august 2024 automatically loaded or protected by barrier frequency is justified and documented in the ccs integrity of lyophilizer system should be maintained following sterilization and drug use Filter used to maintain lyophilizer integrity should be sterilized before each use and its integrity testing results should be part of the batch certification. Frequency of vacuum leak integrity testing of chambers should be documented and maintained and maximum permitted leakage of air into lyophilizer should be specified and checked at the start of each cycle. Lyophilizer trays should be checked regularly to ensure that they are not mishappen or damaged. points to consider during design of loading the loading pattern with the lyophilizer should be specified and documented the transfer of partially closed containers to lyophilizer should be done under grade a at all times and handled to minimize the direct operator intervention conveyor system portable transfer system used to transfer partially closed containers alternative alternatively where supported by validation containers closed in grade a zone and not reopened in grade b may be used to protect partially stoppered vials that is sealed sterile trays a flow patterns should not be adversely affected by transport devices and vent of loading zone unsealed containers that is partially stoppered vials should be maintained under grade a normally be separated from operation by physical barrier or other appropriate measures where sealing of stoppers is not completed prior to opening lyophilizer chamber product removed from lyophilizer should remain under grade a during subsequent handling utensils used during transfer to loading and unloading of the lyophilizer such as tray bags placing devices should be subjected to a validated sterilization process moving to the closed systems it is a system in which the product is not exposed to the surrounding environment they are not opened until conclusion of operation closed system does not refer to wraps or isolators it can reduce the risk of contamination like microbial particulate and chemical from the environment should always be designed to reduce the need for and complexity of manual interventions it is critical to ensure sterility of all product contact surfaces of the system used for aseptic processing designed and selection of the system used should ensure maintenance of sterility connection of sterile equipment example the tubing or pipe work to sterile product pathways after final sterilizing filter should be designed to be connected aseptically measures should be in place to ensure integrity of the component used in aseptic connections means by which this is achieved should be captured in ccs system integrity test to be considered when there is a risk of compromising product sterility supplier assessment should include collation of data in relation to potential failure modes that may lead to loss of system sterility background of the closed system should be based on their design and process undertaken for aseptic process and other risk systems integrity being compromised system should be located in grade a if system is shown to remain integral at every stage then a lower classified area may be used any transfer between classified areas be thoroughly assessed if system is opened this should be performed in classified area appropriate to the material or subjected to further cleaning and disinfection single use systems single use system is a system in which product contact components are used only once to replace reusable equipment like stainless steel transfer lines or bulk containers example bags filters tubings connectors sensors etc single use systems are used in manufacture of sterile products as an alternate to reusable equipment can be individual component or made up of multiple components such as bag filters etc be designed to reduce need of manipulation and complexity of manual interventions some specific risk associated with the sus which should be assessed as a part of ccs include interaction between product and product contact surfaces like adsorption extractables leachables the fragile nature of the system compared to the fixed reusable system 
increase in the number and complexity of manual operations and connections, the complexity of assembly, the performance of pre-use integrity testing for sterilizing grade filters, the risk of holes and leakages, the potential of compromising the system at the point of opening the outer packing, the risk of particulate contamination. Sterilizing process of SUS should be validated and should shown to have no adverse impact on the system performance. Assessment of suppliers including sterilization is critical. For sterile SUS, verification of sterility be performed as a part of supplier qualification and evidence checked on receipt. Adsorption and reactivity of product with contact surfaces be evaluated under process conditions. Extractable and leachable profiles of SUS and any impact on product quality should be evaluated, especially when the system is made from polymer-based materials. Assessment be carried out for each component to evaluate applicability of extractable profile data. For components considered at high risk for leachables that may absorb processes materials or will extend contact times, an assessment for leachable profile should be performed. Simulated processing conditions should accurately reflect actual conditions and based on scientific rationale. SUS should be designed to maintain integrity throughout processing under intended operational conditions. Attention to structural integrity of components is necessary where there may be exposed to more extreme conditions like freezing and thawing should include verification that intrinsic aseptic connections remain integral under these conditions. Acceptance criteria be established corresponding to risk of criticality of products and its processes. On receipt, each SUS be checked to ensure that they have been manufactured, supplied and delivered in accordance with approved specification. A visual inspection of outer packing and a review of attached documents should be carried out and documented prior to use. Critical manual handling operations such as assembly and connections should be subjected to appropriate controls and verified during the APS. Moving to the environmental monitoring and the processing monitoring part, it has general aspects, environmental monitoring for total particles, environmental monitoring for viable particles and the media fill. Continuing with the general aspects of the environmental and process monitoring, environmental and process monitoring form the part of the CCS and used to monitor the controls. Each element of monitoring system like viable, non-viable and APS should be considered together. Their reliability is dependent on design, validation and operation of system that they are monitoring. The program comprise of uh, monitoring the total particles, the viable particles, temperature RH and the APS. The information from these system be used for routine batch certification release and for periodic assessment during review or investigation. It should be applied to both aseptic process and terminal sterilization. The environmental and process monitoring EM program should be established and documented with a purpose that it provide assurance that clean room and clean air equipment continue to provide an environment of appropriate air cleanliness as per design and regulatory requirements. Effectively detect excursion from environmental limits triggering to investigation and assessment. The risk assessments, it should be performed to establish a comprehensive environmental monitoring program that is sampling locations, frequency, monitoring method and incubation methods should be based on detailed knowledge of the process inputs and final product, the facility, equipment, criticality of the process, the operations involved, the routine monitoring data, etc. It should include the determination of the critical monitoring location, consideration of other information like airflow visualization studies, should be reviewed regularly to confirm effectiveness of the site's environmental monitoring program, Monitoring program should be considered in overall context of trend analysis and the contamination control strategy of the site. Monitoring of grade A zones should demonstrate maintenance of aseptic conditions during critical operations. Monitoring should be performed at locations posting highest risk to sterile equipment surfaces, containers, closures and product. 
the selection of monitoring location, orientation and position of sampling device be justified and appropriate to obtain reliable data from critical zones. Sampling methods should not pose a risk of contamination to manufacturing operations. Appropriate alert levels and action limits be set for results of viable and total particle monitoring. Alert level be established based on clean room qualification test results and periodically reviewed based on the ongoing trend data. Alert level for grade A that is for total particles only grade B, grade C and grade D should be such that the adverse trends example the number of events or individual events are detected and addressed. Monitoring procedures should define approach to trending. Trends can include increasing numbers of action limit or alert limit, consecutive excursions of alert levels, regular but isolated excursion of action limits that may have a common cause, for example, single excursion that always follow planned preventive maintenance. Changes in microbial flora type and number of predominance of specific microorganisms. Particular attention to objectionable organisms or difficult to control like spore forming organisms and molds. The monitoring of grade C and D clean room in operations be performed based on data collected during qualification and routine data to allow effective trend analysis. The requirement of alert levels and action limits will depend on nature of operations carried out. Action limits may be more stringent than those listed in this annex. If action limits are exceeded, SOPs should prescribe the root cause analysis and assessment of the product impact and the associated kappa. If alert levels are exceeded, the SOP should prescribe an assessment follow up including the consideration for investigation and or or necessary corrective and preventive actions. So environmental monitoring for the total particle, the total particle monitoring program should be established to obtain data for assessing potential contamination risks and to ensure maintenance of environment for sterile operation in a qualified state. So this is the limit. It is same that we have discussed uh, into the clean room qualification part for grade D in operation limits are not predetermined manufacturer to establish the limits. At rest, particle limit should be achieved after a cleanup period of less than 20 minutes in unmanned state after completion of operation. Occasional indication of macro particles that is greater than 5 micrometer in grade A may be a false count. Consecutive low level counts may be investigated. Environmental monitoring of total particle continued for the grade A zone. The monitoring to be done for the full duration of critical processing including equipment assembly. It should be monitored continuously for particles of 0.5 and 5 greater than 5 micrometer with suitable sample flow rate at at least 28 liters 1 feet per cube per minute to capture all interventions, transient event and any system deterioration. System should frequently correlate each individual sample results with limits at such a frequency that any potential excursion may be identified and responded in a timely manner. Alarms should be triggered if alert levels are exceeded. SOP should define the actions to be taken in response to alarms including the consideration of additional microbial monitoring. For grade B area, similar system should be in place as such for grade A, sample frequency may be decreased. It should be monitored at such a frequency and with suitable sample size that program captures any increase in levels of contamination and system deterioration. If alert or action levels are exceeded, alarms should be triggered. Selection of monitoring system should consider any risk by materials used in manufacturing example like those involving live organisms powdery materials or radio pharmaceuticals that may give rise to biological or chemical hazards. In case where contaminants are present due to process involved and would potentially damage the particle counter or present an hazard of live organisms, frequency and strategy employed should be such as to assure the environmental classification both prior and to post exposure to the risk. Increase in viable particle monitoring should be considered to ensure comprehensive monitoring of the process. 
Additionally, monitoring should be performed during simulated operations. Such operations should be performed at appropriate intervals. The approach should be defined in CCS. Size of monitoring samples taken using automated system will usually be a function of sampling rate of the system used. It is not necessary for sample volume to be same as that used for formal classification of clean rooms and clean air equipment. Monitoring sample volumes should be justified. Environmental monitoring with the viable particles now. Where aseptic operations are performed, microbial monitoring should be frequently used using a combination of methods such as settle plates, volumetric air sampling, glove, gown and surface sampling using swabs and contact plates. The method of sampling used should be justified within the contamination control strategy and should be demonstrated not to have a detrimental impact on grade A and B air flow patterns. Clean room and equipment surface should be monitored at the end of operation. Viable monitoring also be performed in clean rooms when normal manufacturing operations are not occurring. Example like post disinfection, prior to start of manufacturing, on completion of batch and after a shutdown period and in associated rooms that has not been used. In case of an incident, additional sample locations may be used as verification of effectiveness of corrective action that is cleaning and disinfection. Continuous viable air monitoring in grade A zone, example air sampling or settle plates should be undertaken for full duration of critical processing, including equipment that is aseptic setup and critical processing. Similar approach for grade B clean rooms can be used based on the risk. Monitoring should be performed in a way that all interventions, transient events and system deterioration would be captured. Risk assessment should evaluate the location, type and frequency of personal monitoring. Monitoring should include sampling of personal at periodic interval during the process. Microbial monitoring of personal in grade A and B should be performed. Sampling should be performed in a way not to compromise with the process. Particular consideration should be given to monitoring personnel following involvement in critical interventions at a minimum at gloves and on each exit from grade B clean room for gloves and gown. When glove and gown monitoring is done after critical intervention, gloves, gloves and gowns should be replaced prior to continuing the activity. When monitoring is routinely performed by manufacturing personnel, consideration should be given to periodic monitoring under the supervision of quality unit. When operations are manual, example aseptic compounding and filling, enhanced emphasis be placed on microbial monitoring and justified in the CCS. Adoption of suitable alternative monitoring systems like rapid methods should be considered to expedite detection of microbial contamination. Rapid and automated methods may be adopted after validation have demonstrated their equivalency or superiority to be established methodology. Sampling methods and equipment used should be fully understood and procedures should be in place for correct operation and interpretation of results. Supporting data for recovery efficiency of sampling methods chosen should be available. So this is the maximum action limit for viable particle contamination. Additionally here the limit of glove print including five fingers on both hands have been given. Rest the limits are same that were used during the area qualification. Any growth in grade A should result into an investigation. As we have seen in the changes earlier the limit was less than 1 CFU per meter cube. Now it has changed to no growth. Settle plates should be exposed in grade A or B for duration of operation and should be changed after a maximum of 4 hours. For grade C and D, exposure time should be based on the quality risk management and they also should be changed within a maximum of 4 hours. Individual settle plates be exposed for less than 4 hours. Contact plate limit apply to equipment, room and gown for grade A and B. Routine gown monitoring is not required for grade C and grade D areas. Microorganisms detected in grade A and 
grade B areas should be identified up to the species level. So earlier in many of the drafts it was mentioned that it, they should be identified to the genus level but now in this final document it is mentioned that they should be identified to the species level and potential impact on product quality and overall state of control be evaluated. Consideration should be given to identification of microorganisms detected in grade C and D area also where action limit or alert limits are exceeded or where atypical microorganisms are recovered. The approach to organism identification and investigation should be documented. Now moving with the environmental and process monitoring the most important part that is aseptic process simulation. A simulation of the entire aseptic manufacturing operation to verify capability of the process for assuring the product sterility is called as APS or aseptic process simulation which is also popularly known as media fills. Periodic verification of effectiveness of controls for aseptic processing should include a process simulation test using a sterile nutrient media or a surrogate in place of product. APS should not be considered as primary means to validate aseptic process. Effectiveness of the aseptic process should be de to determine through process design, adherence to PQS, training and evaluation of the monitoring data. Selection of an appropriate nutrient media should be based on ability of media and surrogate to imitate product characteristic assessed to pose risk where processing stages indirectly impact variability of introduced microbial contamination example aseptically produced semi solids powders solids and other formulation where product is cooled or heated or lyophilized alternative procedures that represent operations closely can be deployed where surrogate materials such as buffers are used in parts of process simulation surrogate materials should not inhibit the growth of any potential contamination. APS should imitate routine aseptic process and include all critical manufacturing steps specifically assess all aseptic operations performed subsequent to sterilization and decontamination cycle of materials utilized in process to the point where the container is sealed where the non-filterable formulations any additional aseptic steps should be assessed where inert atmosphere is used for manufacturing the inert gas substituted with air unless anaerobic simulation where requiring addition of sterile powders should use acceptable surrogate material in the same containers separate simulation of individual unit operations like process involving drying blending milling should generally be avoided any use of individual simulations should be supported by documented justification and ensure that some total of all individual simulations constitute to fully cover the whole process. The process simulation procedure for lyophilized products should represent entire aseptic processing chain including filling, transport, loading, chamber dwell, unloading and sealing under specified conditions documented and justified conditions representing worst case operating parameters. APS should imitate closely the routine aseptic process and include the critical manufacturing steps. Lyophilization process simulation should duplicate all aspects of process except those may be affecting the viability of recovery of contaminants. For instance, boiling over or actual freezing of solution should be avoided. Factors to consider in determining APS, the use of air to break vacuum instead of nitrogen, replicating the maximum interval between sterilization of the lyophilizer and its use, replicating the maximum period of time between sterilization and lyophilization, quantitative aspects of worst case situations, example loading the largest number of trays, replicating the longest duration of loading where chamber is open to the environment. APS should take into account aseptic manipulations and intervention situations including inherent and corrective interventions representative of routine process be performed in a manner and frequency similar to the routine process. Inclusion and frequency of intervention in APS should be based on assessed risk to sterility. 
APS should not be used to justify practices that pose unnecessary contamination risks. In developing the process simulation test plan, consideration should be given to the identification of worst case condition covering relevant variables such as container size and line speed. The outcome of the assessment should justify the variables selected. Determining the representative size of container closure combinations to be used for validation. Bracketing or matrix approach may be considered for validation for same container closure configuration for different products if process equivalency is scientifically justified. Volume fill per container should be sufficient to ensure that media contacts all the equipment and component surface and the volume used should provide sufficient headspace to support microbial growth and ensure turbidity can be detected during inspection. Requirement of substitution of any inert gas in routine aseptic manufacturing process by air unless aerobic simulation is intended. If these condition inclusion of occasional anaerobic simulation as a part of overall validation strategy should be considered. Selected nutrient media should be capable of growing a designated group of reference microorganisms as described by relevant pharmacopoeia and suitably representative of the local isolates. In developing the process simulation test plan, consideration should be given to the microbial contamination detection method which is scientifically justified to ensure any contamination is detectable. Should be sufficient duration to challenge the process. Operators that perform intervention, shift changes and capability of process environment to provide appropriate conditions for manufacture. For different shift, APS should be designed to capture specific factors, example maximum duration for which an operator may be present in the clean room. Simulation, normal aseptic manufacturing interventions where process is idle, example shift changeovers, recharging dispensing vessels, introduction of additional equipments, etc. Ensuring environmental monitoring is conducted as required for routine production throughout the entire duration of the APS. For campaign manufacturing, consideration be given to designing and performing the APS so it simulates risks with both beginning and end of the campaign and demonstrate that campaign duration does not pose any risk. The performance of end of production or campaign APS may be used as an additional assurance or investigative purposes. However, the end of use of campaign should, should be justified in the CCS and should not replace the routine APS. If it is used, it should be demonstrated that any residual product does not negatively impact the recovery of any potential microbial contamination. For sterile active substances, batch size should be large enough to represent routine operation simulated intervention at worst case and cover potential contact surfaces. All simulated materials be subjected to microbial evaluation. They should be sufficient to satisfy evaluation of process and not compromise recovery of microorganisms. APS should be performed as a part of initial validation with at least three consecutive satisfactory simulations that cover all working shifts and after any significant modification to operational practices, facilities and equipment. Normal APS that is periodic revalidation should be repeated every twice, twice a year, approximately every six months for each aseptic process, each filling line in each shift. Each operator should participate in at least one successful APS annually. Consideration should be given to performing an APS after the last batch prior to shutdown, before long periods of inactivity or before decommissioning or relocating of the uh, line. Where manual operations occur, each type of container, closure and equipment train be initially validated with each operator participating in at least three consecutive successful APS and revalidated with one APS approximately every six months for each operator. APS batch size should mimic that, mimic that used in the routine aseptic manufacturing process. The number of units processed that is filled for APS test should be sufficient to effectively simulate all activities that are representative of the aseptic manufacturing process. 
justification for the number of units to be filled should be clearly captured in the ccs typically a minimum of 5000 to 10000 units are filled for small batches those under 5000 the number of containers for media fill should be at least equal to the size of the production batch this is again a major change with reference to the earlier guidance document with earlier document specified as uh, number where uh, to be manufactured here the number has been mentioned as the size of the batch for lower size batches filled aps units should be agitated swirled or inverted before incubation to ensure contact of media with all interior surfaces in the container all integral units should be incubated and evaluated including units with cosmetic defects or those who had gone through non destructive in process control checks units discarded and not incubated should be comparable with units discarded during a routine fill and only if sop states that units must be removed type of intervention line location specify the number of units removed in no case more units be removed from aps than removed during normal production run example routine production setup discards to understand the process setup and line clearance discards may be incubated separately and not included in the acceptance criteria of the aps in process having materials that contact product contact surfaces but are then discarded like product flushes the discarded material should be simulated with nutrient media and be incubated unless clearly demonstrated that this process would not impact product sterility filled aps units should be incubated in a clear container to ensure visual detection of growth where the product container is not clear that is ember glass or an opaque plastic clear containers of identical configuration may be substituted to aid the detection of contamination microorganisms isolated from the contaminated units should be identified to species if practical to assist in determination of likely source of contaminant filled aps units be incubated without unnecessary delay to achieve best possible recovery of contamination selection of incubation conditions and duration should be scientifically justified validated to provide an appropriate sensitivity of detection of microbial contamination all aps runs should be fully documented and include a reconciliation of units processed example the units filled incubated not incubated and rejected justification for filled and not incubated units should be documented all interventions performed during aps should be recorded including start and end of each intervention all microbial monitoring data and other testing data should be recorded in aps batch record an aps run should be aborted only under circumstances which return procedures require commercial lots to be equally handled investigation should be documented on completion of incubation filled aps units should be inspected by staff trained and qualified for detection of microbial contamination inspection be conducted under condition that facilitate identification of any contamination samples of these units should undergo positive control by inoculation with a suitable range of reference organisms and local isolates target should be zero growth any contaminated unit should result in the failed aps and following actions an investigation to determine the most probable cause determination and implementation of appropriate corrective measures a sufficient number of successful consecutive repeat aps normally a minimum of 3 to demonstrate that the process has returned to the state of control prompt review of all appropriate records relating to the aseptic process since last successful aps outcome of the review should include a risk assessment of potential sterile breaches in batches manufactured since the last aps all other batches not released to market should be included in the scope of investigation any decision regarding their release status should consider the investigation outcome all products that has been manufactured on the line subsequent to the aps failure should be quarantined until a successful resolution of aps failure has occurred when root cause indicate failure related to operator activity 
actions to limit operator activity until retrained and requalified should be taken production should resume only after the completion of successful revalidation an aseptic process or filling should be subjected to repeat or initial validation when the specific aseptic process has not been in operation for an extended period of time there is change to the process equipment procedure or environment that has a potential to affect the aseptic process or an addition of new product containers or container closure combinations moving to the last part that is quality control there should be personnel with appropriate training and experience in microbiology sterility assurance and knowledge of the process to support design of manufacturing activities environmental monitoring and any investigation specification of raw materials components and products should include requirements for microbial particulate and endotoxin pyrogen limit when needed has been indicated by the monitoring and by the ccs talking about the bio burden assay should be performed on each batch for both aseptically filled and terminally sterilized products results considered as a part of the final batch review should we have a defined limits for bio burden immediately before sterilizing filter or terminal sterilization process which are related to the efficiency of the method used samples taken should be representative of the worst case scenario like the end of the whole time and representative of the batch if overkill sterilization parameters are set for terminally sterilized product bio burden be monitored at scheduled intervals pre sterilization bio burden monitoring for the product and components be developed to support parametric release bio burden be performed for each batch any organism found should be identified and their impact on effectiveness of sterilizing process should be determined where appropriate level of pyrogen that endotoxin should be monitored talking about the sterility test the sterility test should be validated for product concern it should be applied to finished product should only be regarded as the last in series of the control measures cannot be used to assure sterility of the product that does not meet the design sop or the validation parameters it should be performed under aseptic conditions sample taken should be representative of the whole batch in particular include samples from the part of the batch that is most at risk for example that are products that are filled aseptically containers filled at the beginning middle and end after any critical intervention based on the risk for heat sterilized product in the final containers the samples should be representative of the worst case location that is potentially coolest or slowest to heat part of each load and for lyophilized product it should be from different lyophilization loads when manufacturing process results in sub batches sterility samples from each sub batch be taken and sterility test for each sub batch should be performed consider performing separate testing for other fp tests for the environmental monitoring product with too short shelf life may not be possible to perform sterility test prior to release additional consideration of process design and additional monitoring requirements be assessed and documented any process like vaporized hydrogen peroxide or uv used to decontaminate external surface or sterility samples before testing should not impact sensitivity of the test method media for product testing should be tested according to the relevant pharmacopoeia before use media for environmental monitoring and aps be tested for growth promotion using scientifically justified organisms media quality control testing be performed by the end user any reliance on external or supplier testing be evaluated and documented including transportation and shipping environmental monitoring data and trend data generated for classified areas should be reviewed as a part of batch certification and batch release a return plan should be available that describe the action to be taken when data from environmental monitoring are found out of trend or exceeding the established limits for products with short shelf life the environmental data for the time of manufacture may not be available in these cases the certification should include a review of the most recent available data should consider use of rapid alternative methods when rapid or automated alternative methods are used these methods should be validated 
with this we come to the end of this presentation hope you have liked it kindly subscribe for more informative presentations thank you